and this is video is in continuation with the data security that is domain 3 of the examination tips so as you said earlier that uh, data security depends on what part that the user is going to secure and what part the vendor is going to secure so in relation to that we have incorporating common conventional security products like a firewall or vpn these things can be like uh, aws we have security groups in place of firewall so we can just edit the security group and that is just like a firewall and apart from that vpn so if you want to uh, connect or on premise with the aws cloud infrastructure we can create a vpn connection and that will require customer gateway and oh, sorry customer gateway so that we can do in the vpc console in aws now there's another thing like design pattern so what kind of infrastructure we are trying to design so that also matters and that solely depends on the customer so what the customer is asking you to do so you can just suggest the best possible way the best design pattern you can do for the customer now the dos mitigation so denial of service mitigation so this is a uh, attack this is a virus attack mitigation solution so this also you need to take care while designing your infrastructure you may have a basic and server uh, at the periphery of the vpc and uh, so that uh, whatever the access is uh, whoever is accessing the your aws infrastructure and that will go through the western server that means if somebody is trying to attack your infrastructure he will just he will have to attack uh, he will be able to only access the western server so that the only that is like only western server is exposed to the outer world so your whole infrastructure will be saved only western server will be affected so this is another solution that you can propose to your client now encryption solutions so it always has some awesome encryption solutions that you can use to protect your data and apart from that you have like complex access control uh, building sophisticated security groups acls etc so we have a lot of acls we have acl security groups that we can use to protect our resources and apart from that we have uh, nacl so that is net uh, that is at the subnet level so we can protect all the instances within a subnet by applying nacl but nacl is a bit tricky we have to be very careful while creating rules in nacl and uh, the it in nacl the rules executed in a sequential manner so we have to keep keep some gaps as well uh, in in multiple rules so that's another thing we have to take care of and now amazon cloud watch for the security architect so cloud was it is a very a complete tool like it's a, uh, you can have a detailed monitoring about all the resources you can use cloud watch basic monitoring to monitor your basic infrastructure basic uh, parameters in the infrastructure so there you can just um, in just monitor your infrastructure in cloud watch apart from that like you can use cloud watch with other resources as well like lambda functions and uh, as life cycles etc so you can just uh, use cloud watch in elp you can use cloud watch in elp as well for health checks and all and domains in do, uh, domain level route 53 domain level highly availability infrastructure you can use uh, cloud watch to create the health check and uh, apart from that we have trusted advisor so trusted advisor will advise you about the resource utilization in your infrastructure so suppose your uh, some of the resources are not utilized not being utilized correctly or they are like underutilized so it will give if it will suggest you that you can just remove these uh, devices and uh, you can just increase the load on few few other devices which are under underutilized and apart from that like a trusted advisor will also will also tell you that 
if some you are using on demand instances so it can suggest you that if you use on spot or some other model then you can save this this much money so th that is also the benefit of trusted advisor service it's awesome service we can use it to save our costs in aws apart from that we have cloudwatch logs which we can analyze and get some troubleshooting tips or purpose while if, if some inf if some infrastructure issue is happening we can just watch the logs cloudwatch logs or cloud trail logs and uh, we can get an idea like where the where the fault is so that is also a very good tool to check the security of of our infrastructure now another thing is like uh, recognizing critical disaster recovery techniques and their implementation so we have to be very much uh, prepared for disaster recovery solutions because if our infrastructure is wholly relying on one availability zone of aws and some due to some natural calamity or some other reasons that availability zone is down uh, it will be our production environment will be hurt so we have to find some solution for failover and uh, that is where your like disaster recovery will come into picture it's always advisable to create a replica of your environment in some other availability zone or region so that if something goes wrong with the with a particular availability zone uh, that is uh, that you can say a data center as well and so that you can roll over to some other data center or availability zone so that will provide you disaster recovery solution and another thing is recovery time objective and recovery point objective so what what time it will take to just to back to normal situation so that also we have to keep in mind and what point what will be the recovery point so it will it come to the same state where it was it was down so that is also a need to be checked while designing the infrastructure and working on data security models apart from that we have evs volumes so we can just take a snapshot of evs volumes of a server of so that we can recover the server within very few minutes and within very few span of time so that is also a very good feature for data security and apart from that aws import export storage gateway so import export can be used for like high a very high huge amount of data like if you have some around 4 tb 10 tb data that you cannot upload through internet connection you can use the import export mechanism and it will be fast and cheap as well so this all has to be all can be uh, suggested by the solution architect another thing is storage gateway storage gateway is another beautiful thing like if you have some data around 1 tb or 800 gb or 2 tb you can just use storage gateway so the storage gateway will help you to uh, upload your data faster to the aws cloud from on premise now the next thing is amazon route 53 so route 53 is a dns solution from aws so you can have your, you can create your hosted zone you can create the dns records so you can provide some uh, uh, region level region level uh, disaster recovery using route 53 if your uh, url is down you can have a page in some other region and you can just route it through route the connections through route 53 you can create uh, different alias records and they may point to to web server of another region so th this way you can provide a disaster recovery and data security in aws another thing is like validation of data recovery method so how are we going to recover our data if the data center is down or something is wrong happened with s3 buckets so will will AWS be able to recover our data and uh, in most of the cases they have done so they have recovered the data because 
enable the replication in multiple data centers. So if you are storing your um, data in one S3 bucket in one particular availability zone, so that will be replicated to some other availability zone as well. So in the, it, it is always recoverable. So that's, um, that's not an issue with AWS. Now the last domain is like uh, troubleshooting. So you can get around 10% questions from troubleshooting part and uh, it will be having a general troubleshooting information and questions so like as as i discussed earlier like if you're not able to access some server so what can be the reason of that and uh, reason is pretty simple if the nacl is you have to check security groups first and then nacl if something is blocked at that level some port is blocked you have to check that and uh, if it's not working then again we have to check some other things like status health checks. So if they are passed, then security group can be the issue. The subnet, if the resource, if the server is in private subnet, then also you cannot access because it you you cannot uh, peep into a private subnet. So that is that is also an issue. And uh, similar to this, like you have to ponder upon many things. What can be the reason of this issue? And that you will get to know only after having some hands-on on AWS infrastructure. So this was.